Hey guys, in this episode we're putting together our rivers and our lake with the new UE5 water system. Let's get to it. Hey guys, today we're activating the new UE5 water system. And although this water system is still experimental, it's been in use for over a year, so I'm confident that it's pretty stable. The one main limitation of the water system as it currently stands is you have to have a landscape in order to use it. So make sure you have a landscape ready to go for this episode. And then the other thing I'll mention is because it's experimental, you want to make sure to back up your world. So in this episode, we're going to set up two different kinds of water bodies, a lake to start and then rivers. And there are other kinds. So for example, you could set up an ocean, but we're not going to do that this episode. And I'm not going to go through every single setting on these. I'm not an overall expert on the water system, but I'm going to go through the settings that I found to be most useful, especially for lakes and rivers. And we do have a couple of new concepts this episode, and these are splines and spline points. Anytime you're dealing with any curved body or any weird shape in Unreal Engine, almost always it's going to revolve around this feature called splines. And we'll talk about it more in just a bit. All right, so to start things out, we need to navigate to settings, plugins, and we need to activate the experimental water plugin, aptly titled. And since this is experimental, I strongly suggest that you guys back up your world before you do this. And even though it's experimental, it's been out for over a year, and I figure once my game's released, it'll probably, hopefully, be fully supportable. Always better to build into the future rather than the past. Yep, we're enabling it and restart. So as soon as you restart, it's gonna take a few minutes because you're gonna to need to load in some shaders. But the next thing I recommend once you get into the world is navigate to kind of a wide open space. And the reason I recommend that is because this experimental water is pretty performance intensive. And we wanna first do it, we wanna first try it out in a wide open area that's not already performance intensive. So the experimental water system enables a few new actors that are available right out of the box. So to use those actors, we go to the drop down here. And then typically what I do is I just search for water and you can then find them once you enable the plugin. So we've got water body, custom, island, lake, ocean, river, and the two that we're going to be focused on today are for lake and for river. But you can experiment with these others at your leisure. So what I would do in a wide open space, we're going to select the lake first because it's a little bit easier to work with. And immediately you'll see this giant pool pull in on your landscape. The first thing I'll do is I'll reposition it to be properly situated. So I'll move it back down to right about there and I can actually move it so that it's into our landscape. And you'll see that this system is entirely dynamic. It's updating the landscape in real time as I move it around. And this is actually the one limiting factor of the water system right now. It has to work with the landscape. In the future, Unreal Engine specified that they want it to work independently of landscapes, but for now it's still bound to them. And the water system revolves around what are called splines. So for splines, think of them as a way of adjusting a curved shape of some kind. So it could be a river, it could be the shape of a shoreline next to an ocean, it could be a lake in this case. So for any given spline point, think of it as a component of the overall actor that influences how that actor behaves. So I can position that spline point somewhere in the world and that's going to affect the rest of the actor. So for example, if I move it out this way, that's going to extend the bounds of the lake. If I move it out that way, same thing. And so you can adjust the bounds. But you also see these two lines coming out from the spline point. And what this does is it determines the angle, the direction of the curve coming out from that spline. So for example, if I wanted the lake to come out much further in this direction over here, so I could select one of these points and I could just change the curve of that spline. And the other thing I can do is I can change the length of that spline and that's gonna determine how much force is applied in that direction that it's lengthened. So you see, as I'm lengthening it, this curve is getting longer and longer because it's pushing it further and further out. Now for our lake here, what I wanna do is I wanna position it roughly in the center of our level, right here. But before I do that, I wanna make it roughly the same size and shape. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shrink it a little bit. And I can do that just by adjusting the typical transform of each of these splines. And you'll notice that as I'm adjusting the spline here, you'll see it in the selected points in the details panel on the right hand side. So you see that value changing. Now the other thing that you can do for splines is you can add additional spline points. Because this is a triangle right now, I really need it more of a square shape. You could just right click anywhere on the overall shape on the circle and say add spline point here. And from there you can reposition that spline point. And actually I've got to shrink this a little bit. All right, so now we have a lake that's roughly the same size and shape as our space over there. But before we move it over there, I just want to show you a few different things that you can adjust in this lake. So if you come into the details panel on the right hand side, 
and scroll down a little bit. Typically for a lake, what I'm adjusting are under the water height map settings. So for the fall off settings, all of these settings are adjusting this space right here, the space between the rest of the landscape and where that water starts. So for example, if I wanted to make the water start right at the edge of the landscape, I would get rid of this edge offset. So instead of 500, that would be zero. And then I just need to move up the lake a tiny bit so that it's bordering the landscape. Yeah, like just like that. Now, most of the time you want that to be more than zero, but because in our landscape already we sculpted that, I don't think we need to put this beyond zero. Now there's a few other settings I wanna mention here that are good to know, but we're not gonna change them here. So let's say you wanted a really, really deep lake. So right now it's only about 500 units deep. And the way I know that is under the curve settings here. We have our channel depth and we have our curve ramp width. So for the curve ramp width, if I make this something like 20, it's gonna be a really steep edge into the lake, like basically a pit. So 2000, I think is totally fine. And if I wanted to make this super deep, I could say, okay, let's make this 5000. And then, whoa, look at that. It goes basically into the depths. The other neat thing about this experimental water is that it comes with what's called a post-process volume automatically. And what that's doing is when I'm under the water, it actually changes the look and feel of everything underneath it. In the past, that was typically an effect you had to add in addition to whatever water material you were using. And there was always the problem where if you are at the very edge of the water like I am here, the water couldn't actually move up and down because then it would move out from the post-process volume and you'd have this space that just looked artificial. But with this new water system, it's really neat because the mesh is actually changing in real time based on the waves. And for the wave settings, where we can adjust the intensity of those is right under wave. It's the wave attenuation water depth here. And what attenuation basically means is that the waves are slowing down. It's like at what depth do the waves start slowing down and then also change, you know, rise up in force because they're really trying to simulate a realistic wave. And so for this, if I wanted to make the waves a lot less because this is just a lake, not an ocean, I could say, well, let's do 8,000. Yeah, so now the waves are very slight, very gentle. And for the size of the lake I have in mind, I think that's appropriate. But if you want like incredible waves, 200. Boom. And it starts doing some crazy stuff like you see there. I wouldn't recommend this unless you're doing an ocean. All right, so the two key settings that we changed were the edge offset under fall off settings and then the wave attenuation water depth of 8,000. And so now I think we're ready to move this into position. And when you move this into position, try to get it so that the spline points are actually in the very same locations as where the rivers start to flow out of this lake. And don't worry so much about getting the shoreline 100% lined up with the foliage because we can always redo the foliage after the fact. But I am gonna make sure to line up those spline points. So right where the river meets. Now, if you see something like this, where you have kind of a darkness in your landscape, that just means that the landscape needs more painting. So I'm gonna go back to landscape mode and I'll go back to painting. Make sure you select our paint layer. The other thing I wanna mention here is that this water system works in conjunction with the landscape system. And in order for this to work, you actually have to have landscape layers on. I kind of assumed it because if you're following along with this series, we've already done that. But you'll see that we now have a water layer right here. But in the paint mode, we can still go right back to our paint layer. And since this is the water quadrant, I'm just gonna select our water quadrant material and I'm just gonna paint on the edge here and make sure I'm covering all of that. And actually I've gotta bump up the tool strength to one so that it overwrites our air quadrant here. And to make sure the edges are lined up, typically I get really close to the surface here. And if some of your foliage is overlapping the water just like that, you know, personally, I really like that effect. That's what I'm going for, but it's really up to you what you want. So I notice on the edge of our water quadrant here that clearly our water is too high up. So I'm gonna select our water body and just gonna move it down, move it down a tiny bit more. And I'm just gonna adjust this spline point slightly to make it a little bit more circular. And because it's so far over in this quadrant, I'm just gonna adjust this one as well. If you have any problems with the foliage lining up, what you could do is one of two things. You could either add additional spline points or you could erase some of your foliage and then just repaint along the appropriate edge. So now it's time to add in some rivers. And rivers, a little bit more complicated. Same kind of thing though. We come up here and we just search for river, water body river, and pull it in. And of course, it's gonna mess up your entire landscape, but never fear, totally fine, as long as you backed up your world. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta position the start of our river at the very center of the lake. So right around here. But we also gotta lower it down to the exact same level of our lake. So I'll select our lake. If I go up to the top, I can see it's at negative 104. That's exactly what I'm gonna give the Z value for our river. 
And what's neat about this is immediately when you come down, you could see the two different water bodies just blending together. Now, obviously this doesn't look perfectly realistic because the lake is going from stable to suddenly zooming out with the river. So let's adjust that at the source of the river. So if I select the spline point at the very top of the river and immediately under the selected spline point, you have this water option. You can expand that. You have depth, river width, velocity. And these three things are pretty important because we're gonna adjust them at every point of the spline of the river. So the first thing I want you to do is at the mouth of the river, so this particular point, let's cut the velocity down to something like 30. So watch how that changes, how fast the water's flowing here. Yeah, so now the water is just kind of slowly ambling from the center of our lake. That's much more natural looking. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut our river width in half down to 1024. And so now we got to adjust our river shape, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the position of each of the splines. And with each of the rivers that we pull in, they're always going to start with three spline points. So we have the source of the river, we have kind of the midpoint here, and then we have the mouth of the river, the end of the river here. And so in general, what I'm going to do is I'm going to position that midpoint right at the bridge. And then the end of the river, I'm going to position past our walls here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add additional spline points wherever I think they're needed. So I'm definitely going to add a spline point right here because the water needs to curve underneath the wall. But then at any other place where the river curves, so like right here, I'm going to put a point and right here as well. And this is actually pretty performance intensive, adjusting these spline points. And the more rivers that we add in here, the more intensive it's going to be. But once we got them adjusted, it's done and it's set for our level. And for the spline point by the bridge here, I'm actually going to change a river width to something like 600, make it really narrow. And that's because the water has to flow through this tiny section of our bridge. But then coming out of the bridge and going into, it's gonna be a lot wider. And here I actually have to make it a little bit wider because our foliage is out further. Let's try 1500. And so for here, when our water flows into our wall, obviously it can't keep flowing in that direction. It's got to change. So what I got to do is adjust the spline a bit. And you can see how the water kind of curves in real time there. And also I'm going to adjust the river width to be a lot smaller. And if you check your other spline points, you'll notice that they actually auto adjust the velocity. So this one is 73. So this one is 108. And so the velocity of the river actually increases as you get closer to the mouth down there. And that's exactly what we want. So that concludes our episode for today. And if you're following along, I actually suggest that you only create one of these rivers this episode. And the reason is in two episodes, we're actually going to convert these rivers into a blueprint because what I want to show you is how to do sound along a river spline. And in order to do that, we need to make a blueprint. And then once we have the blueprint, we can just duplicate that a few times, create three or four rivers or as many as you want in your scene. And in preparation for that next episode is going to be all about environmental sound. So I hope to see you there.